Greetings, and welcome to another episode of the Lily Lectures with me, William Lilly. Today, we are looking how to uncover the secrets behind buying and selling land, houses, or farms. Join me as we navigate the celestial dance that influences these earthly transactions. As usual, we start with the Ascendant and its ruling planet, as well as the planet from which the moon is separated for the querent or buyer. Give the Lord of the Seventh House, as well as the planet to which the moon is applying to, for the seller. Give the Fourth House, the planet placed in it, and the moon and the Lord of the Fourth House for the house, land, or estate to be bought or purchased. Examine the Tenth House, any planets positioned there, and the lord of that house to determine the price, whether it will be sold at a low or high cost. If you find that the lord of the ascendant and the lord of the seventh house are in any amicable aspect, with the lord of the seventh house applying to the lord of the ascendant, it can be inferred that the seller is willing to sell and engage with the buyer. If the significators are in essential dignities during their application or translation or light, or their application is by conjunction, then it is probable that they will agree and reach a purchase agreement easily. If the application or translation of light be by square or opposition, the two parties will eventually reach a bargain, but it will involve many discussions and possibilities of backing out, resulting in a significant expenditure of time. Also, consider if the Lord of the Ascendant or the Moon is applying to the Lord of the Fourth House, or if the Lord of the Fourth or the Moon to the Lord of the Ascendant, and if only the Lord of the Fourth House is applying to the Lord of the Ascendant and receives him in any of his dignities, or if the Lord of the Ascendant is in the Fourth House, or the Moon, or the Lord of the Fourth House is in the Ascendant, then the querent will purchase the house or inheritance at that time in question. But if these dwelling conditions are not present, but the moon transfers the virtue or light of the Lord of the Fourth House to the Lord of the Ascendant, the bargain will be concluded, but more likely through messengers or brokers rather than direct negotiation between the two main parties. If there is no application or translation, or transferring the light of one planet to another, it is unlikely that any agreement will be reached. To determine whether the house or land is of good or poor quality, you will need to see if you find both malefic planets in the fourth house, that is Saturn and Mars, particularly if they are strong or peregrine, or if the lord of the fourth house is retrograde, unfortunate, or in fall or detriment, the property will not last for long or be carried on by your future descendants, but if either Jupiter, Venus, or the north node is in the fourth house, or the Lord of the Fourth is in his own house, the buyer can expect success with the land or house being purchased, and it is likely to remain in good condition for a long time for your descendants. This is an argument that it will be a good investment, and you will receive good value for your money through this bargain. As we conclude our celestial journey today, may the stars guide your earthly transactions and illuminate the path to property ownership. Until next time, I am William Lilly, and this is Christian Astrology.